gospel for this 14th Sunday after Pentecost comes to us from the gospel according to St. Luke, reading from the 13th chapter, beginning with the 10th verse. Glory to you, o Lord. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, synagogue indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Heavenly Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. It was about 8 o'clock in the morning, and we were in my new car. My new car was a 1973 Monte Carlo. And among other things, I liked it because it was pretty fast. It had a 350, and uh, we'd been uh, sort of massaging it a little bit to help it along, and it went pretty quickly. My friend Gordon and I decided that we would take my car to a concert that we were going to in a, in a city that was about 600 miles away. And we took my car for the first time in three years because this was the first time I had a car that was more reliable than his. And so we got in the car and at eight in the morning we pulled up at the filling station and filled up with gas. And I went through my regular little litany of things that I did. All the things that I did almost ritually before I traveled anywhere. I checked the air in the tires and I certainly checked the oil in the engine. Now, after we left and we got going, we got not too terribly far away, maybe a couple hours away, and I stopped for gas again. Because, you know, my father taught me that when you have a car, it's much, much better to fill up the top half than the bottom half. And that's mostly because we lived in places that were freezing cold, and in the wintertime, you never, ever wanted to run out of gas. And so, I stopped for gas, and we filled up, and I opened the hood and checked the oil, and then we left. Now, the third time that we stopped, and I opened the hood again, he said, you know, you really don't need to do that every time. He was getting a little bit impatient with my rituals, these habits that I had, and I explained to him, you know, you're probably right, but it's kind of a habit that I have because of my previous car. I had a, a 67 Chev, and I don't ever, honestly, ever remember stopping at a filling station and not putting oil in at the same time as I put in gas. <laughs> and so it became kind of a, a real habit, and as you know, old habits die hard. It's hard to stop doing something to become accustomed to, but he, uh, he forgave me. Old habits die hard. When we get into a pattern of behavior, it is difficult for us to see beyond that pattern. And what prompted that pattern in the first place? I wanted to share this story with you because I believe that in our text this morning, the woman that we hear about who had been hampered by a spirit for 18 years that had made her ill, that had made her literally bent over, in some translations doubled over, this spirit had become something really heavy for her. Now, typically when we talk about this text, we talk about the insensitivity and callousness and self-righteousness of the leader of the synagogue who says, look, there are other days in the week on which you can be healed. Why are you taking the Sabbath day that we all know we are supposed to preserve as holy? Why are you doing it today? Come back on another day and be healed. 
totally missing the grandeur and the glory of what it was that Jesus was doing. And of course, we like to focus on him because Jesus really thrashes him afterwards. You hypocrites, he says. Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? He really comes down hard on this guy. And so we feel that we learn something about how it is that we are supposed to preserve more what Jesus wants rather than what we understand our rules to be. But today I want to focus more on this woman. I want you to think carefully about what it is that's being said about her. Here we have a woman who is so troubled by this spirit of infirmity that she's literally bent over. Now, in our context in North America, we have so much good medicine that we seldom see a person who's so badly disabled that they are literally physically bent over. But in countries in the developing world, you certainly, certainly can see this where a person is so ill that they're bent over that literally their perspective on the world is from down here. They have to look up. They can't even look a person in the eye. They must look up at everybody because that's what their infirmity has done to them. Now, I don't know if you've seen such a person or can imagine such a person, but surely to be doubled up so badly, to be bent over so badly that you cannot even stand up straight we can imagine how difficult that must be for that person. Now, this woman's difficulties, this woman's infirmity, this woman's ailment, it says was a function of a spirit. She had a spirit that caused this to happen to her, and we don't know exactly what that means. But there's a couple of interesting things about this that differentiates her from other people who had received the gift of healing from Jesus. And I hope you notice this. First, she didn't ask for anything. In many other instances, the person who receives healing, the woman who had had a loss of blood for a long time, she came up and touched Jesus. She knew that she needed to be healed. She knew that she needed something, and so she went to Jesus and touched him. Others asked for the gift of healing, and still others were brought by friends or family to Jesus because they knew that this master could do something for them. But in this case, there's no indication that this woman asked for anything. She simply was there. But here's the good news. Jesus noticed her. Her situation, one might say, was so bad and so long suffered that she didn't even notice that there was something that could be done about it. She was simply, like this, unable to move. She was, for all intents and purposes, not content with her situation, but certainly unaware that anything needed or could be done about it. She was just willing to put up with it. But as I said, the good news is that Jesus noticed. This woman's situation becomes for us something of a paradigm. We too suffer from a condition that is absolutely crippling for us. The condition from which we suffer is called sin. And it is a paradigm in this sense because we are so bent over by our sin, we are so crippled by our sin that we don't even know it anymore. Our position, our deformity becomes an old habit. It becomes so routine for us that we don't even notice. And so our whole life is lived from a perspective that has us looking up. From a perspective that has us looking at people unnaturally. From a perspective that is not what God intended for us. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you may not know this, but you are like this woman bent over, quite unable to stand up straight. You may not even know that you are bent over because it's become so much of a habit, so much of a way of life for you that you're not even aware of your need to change anything. That's what the case is for many of us. But the good news for us 
the very good news for us is that Jesus notices. Jesus sees the condition that you're in. Jesus sees that from which you suffer and wants to do that which is necessary to heal you. To bring you to a life of wholeness, to a life of health that will enable you to live as you ought to live. I'm not sure how many of you understand or see yourselves as being so debilitated by your sin, but the fact of the matter is we are. We deceive ourselves when we assume that there's nothing wrong with us. Because as we measure the quality of our life based upon our relationships with other people, based upon the decisions that we take in context in which we find ourselves, we find ourselves making decisions that are ultimately selfish. Decisions that are ultimately not giving glory to God, but seeking to glorify ourselves. Sisters and brothers in Christ, we are bent over. And we need more than anything else to be healed. We need to be healed, whether we know it or not, whether our habit is such that we're willing to live with it or not. Jesus sees what we need. And Jesus offers us the gift of healing. The question is, are you willing to embrace the gift that Jesus offers? The question is, are you willing to trust in what it is that Jesus has done for you? Or are you, like the leader of the synagogue, going to indignantly and self-righteously stand up and say, no, 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 that's not the way it's done. This is the order of life that we're accustomed to. This is the way it ought to be done. Jesus offers us this gift, and he offers us this gift freely. Irrespective of our awareness of our malady, irrespective of our ability to do anything about it, and we have none, Jesus offers to us the gift of healing. Sisters and brothers in Christ, we are so badly bent over, quite unable to stand up. But today, 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 I want to invite you to leave this place to think about this malady that we have, this infirmity that we all share that's called sin. And to know that Jesus has noticed you. Jesus has seen you. And Jesus has said to each and every one of you, brother and sister, your ailment is healed. Stand up straight. Live the life that God would have you live, proclaiming the good news to people around the world who so desperately need to hear it. Brothers and sisters, Go out from this place today. And do not deceive yourselves. You are as bent over as anyone. We all are as bent over as any. And we all need to hear that message of healing. But more than anything, know this. Jesus has noticed you. And Jesus says to you, your ailment is healed. Go out from this place. And spread the word, because Jesus heals all our ills. Jesus provides for us that which we cannot do for ourselves. No matter what old habits that we have that might die hard, Jesus takes care of it all. Trust Jesus and be healed. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we humbly come before you this day recognizing that we in our sinful condition are as bent over as this poor old lady. Grant us the healing that you offer so freely. Help us to recognize that even when we don't know our own infirmity, you notice us and offer us what we need. Grant us the grace to embrace that gift freely offered freely given, but at such great cost. Help us to embrace it, and in embracing it, to celebrate the life that you would have us live, 
by sharing the good news with all those around us, the good news that you heal us all. We ask this grace in the name of him who died for us, Jesus, our Lord and Savior.